Laura, thank you for sitting down with me. Uh, in your living room, which I really like. Thank you very I much. I think it's an interesting choice to have this on your you wall. You know, some people think it's a bit pretentious, but I no. love being an actor. You are an actor, and, and you're proud of it. And, and you only invite actors <laughs> over. <laughs> it's kind of my thing. Yeah, I so like it. So welcome. Thank you. To my place. I love it, I love it. Uh, let me start off. Uh, marriage Story. Wonderful film. Incredible performance. No. Like, sincerely, what you took of divorce lawyer, Nora Fanshawe. Yeah. Right? Everybody is like, am I going to like this divorce lawyer? They make people get divorced or they help people get divorced. You had a femininity. You had a gentility. This was your job and you were unapologetic about your job. Um, talk to me about how you found your way into this character. Well, thank you for your kind words. And I, you know, I had the great experience, privilege, and cheat, if you will, of Noah Baumbach, our writer director, yeah. being my friend. And for a year or so, he was writing and had said he wanted to write a love story and started having meals with myself and Adam Driver and then also Scarlett Johansson eventually. And, um, and then sort of said to us over the course of some months, I think I want to make a love story about divorce. And through those conversations, he started writing. And um, so I felt so close and kind of inside the story from the intimacy of watching him build this film, which right. was an amazing thing. So your voice was in mind as he was constructing the yeah, character. Okay. Yeah, and I think our voices were in mind, but not knowing what parts we'd play. Okay. Um, oh, but really? then, yeah, but then eventually, um, you know, he wrote this ridiculously delicious role. It's pretty good. Um, and, and wonderfully complicated in, in the way you described, in that she is fierce and very in control, and I think utilizes her femininity and her ferocity to strategize her win. Sure. But it's also rather calculated and terrifying, um, as is the business of divorce. So there's, there's heartbreak amidst what was fun for me as an actor. You have a moment in the first scene when you're meeting Scarlett, and you like get on the couch, and you kick your feet up underneath you, and you're just like <laughs> listening. To her, and it's like such a, like you're fully attuned to her. Yeah. But like you don't feel as if you have to present yourself in any particular way in order to be taken seriously. What gives you that permission? Well, it, it's honestly with Noah, even that is sort of in the writing. Is it really? Because the way he described her kicking off her, I think he even says red high heels. He, he says, he said something to the effect of sort of she curls up into her or something. So I so wanted the gesture to feel like, oh, I'm going to be your therapist and best friend now. Sure. And that's my role. And I'm going to now teach you about your own narrative that you're about to discover about yourself so that I can now use it to win my case, which is a really <laughs> troubling and kind of fantastic <laughs> thing to play out. Do you? Do you like her? Do you, Laura, like Nora? <laughs> I um, loved learning that she's right. Yeah. Despite my distaste for her business at hand. Understood. You know, I, um, I loved that amongst the cast and crew, we'd all been a various, uh, had various experiences and been at least one player in that story Understood. somehow. And, um, so the business of divorce, the idea of it, I think is traumatizing for most people and most people working on the movie. Yeah. So I think I had some distaste and fear of playing her and also this amazing monologue he wrote for me made me discover that she's so right and that's her strategy, which is to protect women and give them voice in a place they're not acknowledged. Right. And that was, you know. Amazing fun. Charlie's not going to want that. He, he hates LA. We're interested in what you want to do. What you're doing is an act of hope. You understand that? Yeah.
you're talking about like how women are not allowed to be imperfect, especially as being seen as mothers. Mm -hmm. um, and that like, you, she's trying to admit like, yeah, I have foibles, I fall short. And you're like, stop, no, <laughs> that's not gonna play. Like we gonna <laughs> go back and do that again. Is that, that double standard in terms of like how fathers can be seen and how mothers need to be seen, how do you feel about it? Well, I'm so happy you asked that question yeah. because yeah. I will answer it and it's a great segue flip into it. what I want to ask you. Flip it, flip it. Um, there's always a double standard for yeah. all of us. Sure. Um, as you experienced in your film, and so I want to talk about ways, but I, I will just say as a mother and single parenting and, you know, raising children, um, I think particularly if there's been a divorce and you're single parenting, so there's not someone else always there going, listen to your dad, listen to your mom, yeah. you misunderstand what their point of view is, <laughs> all the dynamics in that. I think that because of the separation at hand that takes place in marriage story, you know, the other person is being attacked, not heard right. um, in, the, in the, the battle towards custody. And um, so I think Nora's speech is extraordinary, and I myself have felt it in pretty much every aspect of my life. Sure. Um, and, and not to say on a feminist level that men don't too, because we've all been misunderstood, and if gender roles were really clear, yeah. we wouldn't be in a mess, because right. we'd all be vulnerably available to be all things. Amen, sister. And not, you know created, uh, this created boxes, box we're put in. Boxes, um, So. Oh, it's your turn. Wait, yeah. I'm gonna sit back okay, so Okay, sit get back, get okay, ready. let's do it. Um, and hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm, I wanna ask you so much as the beautiful actor you are and, and the, the gorgeous performance that you give in Waves, but also as a parent. Yeah. I was so moved by, I mean, this devastating story and your performance. Because the, the first thing I want to ask you about, speaking of roles, okay. is the, the role a man might put himself in as holding the responsibility of making sure your son never has to be wounded in the way you were. That just killed me. And, and, and the wrath of yeah. what unfolds because of that determined idea of what yeah. he might experience because you had. So I'd love to hear what that felt for you, how that felt for you as an actor, but also as a father yourself. Like, I, I can smell what the darn is cooking and I like it. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, I think you can relate to this as a parent. You want to sort of shield your children from the hardships from the slings and arrows that life can just sort of mm. hurl at you. And in the back of your mind, you know they're going to have to go through it anyway. You try to shield them as much as you possibly can, but we all have to experience life for ourselves. I have two young boys um, raising a young man and a young girl in this movie, but with his son in South Florida, recognizing that just being young, black, and male is a threat in and of itself. Mm. There's a desire to see him survive, first and foremost, and then to not be written off. So he wants to see him thrive. He knows he has potential, and he works really hard to make sure that he realizes that potential. And it's almost like a vice grip sometimes. Mm -hmm. He's lost in his life. He's lost his first wife to a drug overdose. And so he has these two children that he has to raise by himself for a period of time. And for a man, I think that's a really unique position to be in, one that's not anticipated, and one that he is fearful of having to replicate again. He knows how precious and how fragile family can be. So that's all, all the more intensely he holds on because of that fear that things can be taken away from him. I think what Ronald, the dad, where he could possibly improve is making sure that he creates the space for his child to share his thoughts his feelings, his concerns, and to know that his voice is as important as anybody else's in the house. Because when things start to unravel, the model of masculinity is get your stuff together mm -hmm. and figure it out. Mm. It's not about sharing or coming to people and sort of confiding. 
And so he feels he has all these things happen to him simultaneously. And unfortunately, he feels as if he has to deal with it alone. And I hope in real life as a parent, I create the space for my sons to come to me and say, Dad, I'm having trouble. I need help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I had the privilege of working with Kelvin on a movie, actually, yes. uh, two years ago. And I just thought it's he beautiful. was so, oh, my God, you yeah. just fall in love with him. Like, what a sweet tender yes. actor and person and you see him on camera and the two of you together and you know your heart's so cracked open. I said it before, I'll say it again, the world don't give about you or me. We are not afforded the luxury of being average. Gotta work 10 times as hard just to get anywhere. The beauty of your performance um, and the thing I wanna ask you about is, you know, you read a script and it lays out for you that there is this trajectory, this journey sure. that this man, this father is going to go on. And there's this replicated scene, if you will, yeah. or that I was so moved by who you are with your son before everything that happens right. and who you are later with your daughter. As you tell her you were, ah, oh, it makes me want to cry. You tell her you're worried about her and you give her room yeah. to share her feelings. And, you know, we know as an actor, you, you're given this roadmap and you want it to be flawed and human and not this sort of aha journey where someone sure. becomes an entirely other person. Right. And it was so beautiful to watch you have incremental growth through heartbreak, but not become this entirely other human to yeah. be available in your brokenness, even the way you ask her in that scene about how, or you share with her, isn't it hard, you know? So I just wanted to ask you when you were thinking it out and with your director, like what were those thoughts or conversations about where to start and how to get to an entirely other kind of parenting? That's, that's so powerful. Laura, thank you. Oh my you God. You just made a black man blush. You can't see it, but <laughs> it's, it's happening right now. Um, so, let's see. Tragedy happens, and I think a lot of times we have insight, uh, we have evolution that either transpires through tragedy or through um, epiphany, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you hope for epiphany more often than not, but oftentimes it takes something really <laughs> tough to hopefully illuminate a new way of being in life. I think that there's a recognition that holding on with the vice grip that he had with his son and then the subsequent actions that his son takes that leads to sadness may not be the only way of being for your children. And that if you want your children to share what's going on in their lives, you kind of got to be the change you want to see in the world mm. and put it out there, right? And it's also born out of necessity. After he and his wife have a bit of a, a breaking and the communication has stopped, it's been sort of the pause button has been hit and they're not, they're missing each other mm -hmm. because they're grieving both in their own ways and hers is a very individual process and he's having a tough time dealing with her process. And so he takes his daughter fishing to connect, Yeah. right? Oh. Like I realized that, that I don't really know what's been going on with you and you and I are really the only two people know what it's like to live in our skin right now. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going through something, you have to be going through something and I'm gonna ask you. And if I haven't in the past, it's like, I'm sorry I didn't see you, but this tragedy has now sort of taken away the veil and be like, I have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. There's no cruise control that you can press on any relationship whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's a father-son, father-daughter, like it needs attention. Um, and it's like when he lets things out, he doesn't think it's gonna happen. And so he has this handkerchief, like some characters uh, you let, they, you just let it flow, yeah. right? And you're like, oh, you see me, you see all of me, <laughs> right? And some people don't have that, right? So it's almost an embarrassing moment for him. Mm -hmm 
But she actually gives him permission with her generosity to be like, Dad, it's okay. Yeah, beautiful. You know? So thank you for that sort of recognition. I, I appreciate that. Well, and your, you know, your vulnerability and your willingness to be both men and all men in that, in that struggle of what it is to be a communicator as a parent. Like that is, you know, it's cool to be an actor. We yeah. love it, but yeah. when it cracks through and you want every kid and parent to see this and share the movie together, yes. like then you're doing the healing work and that's really beautiful. Bless you. This is I'm, why I I'm have stoked. this dialogue in my living room. I know, it's good. I love actors. Yeah. And I love actors talking about actors. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's I'm just so kind glad of you thing. do. So, no, no problem. <laughs> Let me segue to like a first impression that I have of you. Oh. I've met, I've met you on a couple of different occasions and just in passing and whatnot. I think once was at, um, Casting Directors Awards. Yes. And you spoke about the casting director for Big Little Lies, I yeah. believe it was. Yeah. Every room that you walk into, you take up a great deal of space. <laughs> and and you don't apologize for it. Really? Like you strike me as the kind of person who is incredibly comfortable in their own skin. And I'm wondering how long have you lived that life? Or am I am I putting something on you? I'll also add this. Yeah. You seem fearless. Like the choices that you make as an actor, you're not afraid to be very big. Renata like has these like, I'm not not going to be rich. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's a whole mood, right? But like some people are afraid to like let it out there because what, what can the camera take or whatnot? You seem fearless to do anything. What gives you that permission? How long did it take to become Laura Dern? because I want to be like that. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Let's just say <laughs> if I am fearless like that as an actor, then it might only be matched by my fearfulness as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> it's my shadow side. Gotcha. Um, I, you know, but, and, I'm growing into my own skin. Okay. Like, ah, being a woman is a, amazing. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. I grew up, I started making movies as an 11 year old. And, you know, so it becoming an adult actor is an amazing feeling because you are, you know, I've been raised by all these filmmakers who, you know, forced me to, to dive into the deep end and try things and require that of me and, yeah. and complicated, amazing, fearless filmmakers who, would create insane circumstances or worlds, but ask me to be incredibly honest in it, yeah. or have something simple and honest and ask me to be, you know, radically insane in those worlds. Yeah. And so I think that's where you get your bravery. And my parents are incredibly fearless, beautiful actors. And I watched them be fearless in areas and fearful in areas. Did you always want to do it? Did you know Always. You? Well, always. Seven. Age seven. From age seven. Yeah. And it wasn't them pushing you? It was like, I want to oh, do... Oh, no. They didn't want me to. They didn't? No. Did they discourage or did they just... My mom discouraged. Okay. Even. I, I mean, and I think because as a woman in the film industry, she was worried for me, especially as a child. Uh, speaking of being comfortable in one's own skin. Yeah for all the challenges, insecurities, and vulnerable rooms that a young girl could be in. Sure. She was terrified for me and, and protective and um, a lioness, which was great to be raised by. Um, <laughs> and my dad, I think, assumed I'd find something else interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely went into the family business and, and you know, playing these wildly cracked open people are the greatest time you could ever ask for, sure. only matched because in every interview people say, I mean, you've had more meltdowns on screen than, <laughs> than you in a television <laughs> show. I'm like, we, we basically, I think we're 
siblings <laughs> in having meltdowns on television. I think we can own that. Between This Is Us and Enlightened and, and Big Little Lies, sure. we've probably together had as, as many meltdowns as should be allowed. Maybe. 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 I think. But isn't it delicious to just have to be I think there's, without, so, there's you know? something about this profession where you get sort of uh, a pat on the back for expressing a multitude of ways of being in life that if you actually walked around in life, people would be like, are you okay, right? Yeah. But when you turn on a camera and you put a little makeup and throw in a costume, it's like, great, do it again. And so you don't have to carry it around with you. I feel like I get a chance to let all these different personalities that exist within me out at different points in time, and therefore I get a chance to make peace with all of who I am. Totally. Do you agree? And I, I think that's why people fell so in love with this character that you created. And perhaps, as you mentioned, Renata, because people mention that line, for example, it's the thing we aren't given permission for, and right. we recognize ourselves in these characters. Yes. And thank God there's some release, or we feel that if, if people love this character, then they give themselves permission for more humanity. Absolutely. Um, and that's what's so beautiful about what we get to do. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I is, when you approach any character, do you feel as if like it is you or aspects of you? Do you feel like you go outside of yourself to find little things to bring in? Like, what's the process? A little bit. Don't, don't give it all away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Have yeah. Have your secrets. <laughs> but... oh, don't worry. <laughs> I definitely do, Sterling. Um, I, um, I, th I, I mean, I ask you the same. I think it's such a combination, right? I mean, yeah. emotionally, I don't know how to play someone I don't understand. Amen. You know, so yeah. I, I think even if it's the most incredibly opposite human with such different circumstance than me, um, of which I've been lucky to play people that I are, are so outrageously different. Sure. I, I understand their longing, their addiction, their loneliness, their joy, yeah. their falling in love, whatever those things are. It and starts here then. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. same for you? Same thing. Yeah. I feel like when people be like, how do you get there? It's like, People have an idea of who they think you are by virtue of like how they're introduced to you, mm -hmm. whether they see what one movie or one television show over the other. But you know that like all of those things are kind of secretly you, yeah. and you're just kind of like letting whatever aspect needs that the character needs come to the fore. Um, and I've learned over time. I used to have this real thing about playing good people, and I recognize that fundamentally, I think that all people are good for the most part, um, but that it's okay to accept all of this stuff. Like we spend so much time judging ourselves and being like, oh, I'm being bad because I'm being selfish in this moment. I'm being bad because I want this. And it's like, you know what? Maybe you just kind of like are being human and you need to give yourself that permission. Um, and so I think I'm an all right human being. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not, embarrassed by anything that comes out of me. Like, I'm, I'm not. Like, it's like, at some point in time, I'm gonna have to use it, so might but as well get used to it. That is so beautiful um, and so important, and, and if I may, mm. deeply profound, because we come into this with responsibility. Yeah. And we know that the people who came before us were, perhaps never represented Come on. in the honorable way. Sure. Be a person of color, be a female, whatever it is. Yeah. The stories were lies right. and the stories were not relatable. And yeah. we are longing desperately to see ourselves on screen yeah. and to know ourselves. And there was a responsibility that I think so many of us felt that we were supposed to represent as good and yes. noble and to change the paradigm. Right. And I think it's gorgeous that you're saying we have to all be all of it. Yeah. And we, that the permission to be broken and flawed and heroic and villainous sure. and hilarious right. and the romantic lead yeah. and the, you know, evildoer, Come like on. we yes. are human beings. Yes. 
Um, and you know, you're doing that with your entire body of work. It's what we long to do. And that's, that's the real work also of, of allowing people to feel like they're seeing themselves on film. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge journey and one that I think is, is really gorgeous to be, to be able to have conversations that yeah. we wouldn't have been allowed to have be had, uh, 30 years ago. Absolutely. I mean, my, you know, growing up around actors, I would say that. Um, and you know, now that we're parents, like we want our kids to see themselves Absolutely. in books and on film um, with all its complication and challenge. Uh, and that's, you know, that's also a very gorgeous responsibility yeah. to, to, to hold in a genuine way. Uh, do you care from there? No, I don't you care. You do care. You and you should care. Okay. okay. All right. And nothing to worry about here. And you know why? Because the wise and noble father is going to be there to hold it down. Really? Where is he? Where is he? If you see him, will you send him my way? <laughs> Shame on you. Well, hello. I mean, I could be asking you, how does it feel to be, you know, on the eve of giving your kids the greatest present possible yeah. uh, to be in the Frozen sequel. But I just want to ask you for myself sure. to tell me anything, because I can't wait. So I took my oldest son, who's now eight, to see the first Frozen movie. And he enjoyed it, right? <laughs> He wanted to play the first song over and over again because we got the soundtrack and it's like these men busting up an ice cube. And I was like, hey, you want to listen to You Want to Build a Snowman? He's like, oh, I just want to bust ice cubes, right? <laughs> so now that he's a little bit older, I think he has a greater appreciation for the totality of the story. I've seen bits and pieces and it is every bit an action adventure movie uh, led by these two heroines that happen to be sisters and they choose each other over and over again. They don't need some dude to come save the day, like they can save themselves. I love being a part of that. I love that there is a character of color in this world of Arendelle. I think for such a long time, black folks have to wonder like, what, is it, what would it be like to have someone like me in this show? What would it be like to be Superman or Batman? And then you get Black Panther. Now we have this character, uh, Lieutenant Matias, right? Who I get a chance to vocalize. And I have a little action figure. And oh my I have God. like Legos oh. and everything. And I'm like, oh, it's really happening. That's uh. <laughs> amazing. Can I ask too, how long do you work on something like that? So it, it happens over about the course of a year, year, or year and a half. And you'll go in and record for four or five hours. And then you'll have a month break. Mm -hmm. And then you'll go in and record again. And they're constantly changing the script. And you rarely get a chance to read with your fellow actors, mm -hmm. but you get to read with the director and the writer, and they're absolutely wonderful, Jennifer and Chris. Mm -hmm. um, and they give you fertile soil to play with, and then the animators show you new things that they've done each time, and then you get a chance to see how they're animating your face and how your facial structure goes into the animation oh. of the character. Like, it's stupid. Oh it's really stupid. What about you? You have been a part of, like, Tons of things, Mo many, many franchises. You're about to revisit a little Jurassic Park action. Mm -hmm. May I say, first of all, I remember the first joint and I remember the gams and they were long <laughs> and they were kicking and the shorts were great and the oh, gams- I don't have the same outfit on. <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> What's it like to revisit something after being away from it for such a long time? How do you feel about it? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be amazing. But I will say I expect to be invited over again. And I expect for my Lego to be there next to your Lego. And anybody else that comes over, I think you should only invite people who, who have Legos. Some yeah. kind of action Yeah, yeah, figure. really. If you don't have an Just action Just to put figure, it out there. Yeah. You're yeah, not can't, really can't an actor or an actor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, <Thank you>. exactly. <laughs> and this right now is the worst time. It will only get better. Wasn't it Tom Petty who said the waiting is the hardest part? Uh, I don't know. I represented his wife in their divorce. I want to ask one more question. Uh -oh. You have such a gorgeous body of work, right? Your first Academy Award nomination, 24? Something yeah, like that? 23, 2, something. What? Like that. Yeah. Two, two part question. What haven't you done that you want to do? Like it's so much, like I'm wondering, have you tapped all of it? 
Is something missing? And then finally, to be in this sort of like buzz conversation of awards and whatnot, like how, do you, how does it sit in your soul? I'm wondering like how you navigate the expectations of it all. Oh, what a good question. Um, so first off, um, and I would love to hear your answer, and I, and I hope it's similar, which is I haven't even begun. I can't wait to do a million things I haven't tried. Um, I'm having the time of my life. I've, you know, I love being an actor. I love being a mother. I'm just really blessed, and I'm right now, you know, promoting two films sure. made by partners Low who are my women. dearest friends. Yes. So it's like we're truly a family marching around selling our wares um, with these two movies. So that's already like ridiculous joy. Yeah. Uh, and we only talk at dinners about the next thing we want to make. And I want to keep working with the people I love and have gotten to work with my whole life. So, so you know, that's... Yeah. That's the you know amazing feeling. So I want to ask you that part first as well. How do you feel about what's next? What haven't I done, or what do I want to do? Well, it's 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 interesting because just over the past few years, have I entered into a place where people are are eager and saying like, what do you want to do? Like for such a long time, it's like, please, sir, may I have some more? Like waiting for like crumbs from the table of joy, and it's been a wonderful thing to be like, no, dude we're interested in being in partnership with you like talk to us about ideas of things that you want to bring to fruition right so now that i have this like moniker of making people cry i'm interested in making them laugh a little bit more Love. doing a little bit of action adventure type stuff like carrie washington and i have something in development which is sort of like a black mr and mrs smith which i think could be a lot of fun amazing um, so it's like it's every time people think they figure you out and have a box for you you just want to keep expanding that box of it until they stop trying to put you inside. Exactly. It. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And same for me. If I've done it, if there's the last thing I've done, I've got to do the opposite. Absolutely. And just, you know, hopefully yeah. keep it rolling forever. But the buzz. Talk to me about, like, how do you feel? Like, is it fun? Is it exciting? Or do you, like, I don't pay it any attention? I think it's both. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I, I want to hear from you as well about it. I mean, I... Um, you know, I've grown up around it my whole life. Yeah. I, I've been to awards with my parents as a little girl. Sure. I've watched them struggle with um, caring and not caring, just like reviews or anything yes. else. Caring oh about God. what other people think and letting it go entirely. Um, and I think human beings go through phases. You know, they're more vulnerable and more sensitive to what others think at yeah. one moment in their life and could care less at another. Um, Liking being in a little more of the I could care less okay. energy. Okay. Um, it feels a little more empowering, but but you know, not caring and also knowing what's so good for a movie yeah. feels great. Sure. You you find humility in realizing that you are you are in service of the thing. Yeah. When you're part of getting a story you love that you think is important, which we both have in right. these cases seen by the world yes. you know so like the more press the merrier the more conversation the merrier support accolades a good review these are especially in independent film it brings attention you're desperate to the story. for them yes and and to get comfortable with like yeah we need this this is great we're right. part of a a team that needs this support yeah um that's a great perspective so I love that, that helps a lot yeah when it becomes personal uh -huh. um it's, you know, it's a great thing to be in the checking of yourself. I mean, a, a beautiful, brilliant actor, very famous actor, so beloved for so many years, amazing career, as well as one of my dearest friends, like our, one of our biggest directors of all time. We had a dinner and it had been an awards season and they were the shoe-ins. There were, right. he was gonna win best yeah, picture yeah, yeah. and the other guy was gonna win best actor. Uh -huh. And I had dinner with them the day after nominations were announced and neither of them were nominated. And it was an amazing dinner. Oh, wow. And they were hilarious about like the setup of saying you don't care and then investing yeah. in feeling 
that you're somehow <laughs> less or like failed your group because the thing didn't happen. And I mean, right. I, I feel like then it becomes a team sport. And yes. you, again, you have to surrender this idea of wins and losses yeah. because we made our thing. Yes, like we, we did. did what we love. Right. That's why we're here in your living room <laughs> um, to talk about the bliss of getting to do what we love. Right. And then now just being the service of promoting something we think people need to yeah. see, deserve to hear this narrative, um, and trying to surrender the rest. That's a wonderful perspective. But how perspective. about you? <laughs> That's a wonderful perspective, um, and I like it. And I'm with you. I, I think for such a long time, I've been on the outside looking in and wondering like, wow, what must it be like to get nominated for like an Emmy? What would it be like? Get nominated well, for Well, you an are Oscar. not on the outside now, buddy. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but like, I still feel like that. It's been a, yeah. just a few years that have been really overwhelmingly blessed, right? Um, and I look at, I pay attention to who's like in the categories and stuff. And I was like, it would be an honor to be acknowledged in that way. Um, I do feel that like the story is so wonderful that if my voice helps promote and mm -hmm. brings attention to the story that I'm all about it. Yeah. I love my filmmate, Trey Edward Schultz, is a beautiful soul. And we get a chance to come in and out of these films, but the director slash writer lives with them for years, oh. right? Through the creation process, principal photography is a blip. And then they go through post-production and they really edit and bring this thing to fruition. And you're just so happy for them when it gets embraced, yeah. you know? Oh. That it's like, I can do that all day. If personal, sort of like, if I got a nomination, I would be on cloud nine. It would be such a cool and wonderful feeling to like be recognized by the Academy in that way. And if I don't, I have the satisfaction of knowing I made a really, really good movie that I'm really excited for people to yeah. see. Right? So yeah. I, I take your wisdom, I absorb it. I love and it. And I thank you for it. Oh my goodness, I thank you too. Well, thank you for coming to my living room. I love you. I love you. I honestly do. I do feel like family. I might even move in here. Let's do it.